Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. It's been a minute since I last uploaded. I don't know, about a week or so, maybe more. Um, but once again, I got a shit ton of assignments and homework to turn in for school. Especially for useless classes like bio. Um, I honestly don't understand why. If you're a CS major and you have to take bio, you know, it's just annoying as hell. I don't understand it at all, but it just takes up all your time and I have no time left to do any of this stuff. And it's usually like 3 a.m. and by that time I'm just ready to go to sleep because I got 9 a.m. in the next uh, morning. So finally it's only 12 so I can actually record this. So yeah, so in this video we're going to be doing another reverse engineering crack me thing. It seems that those videos seem to be doing pretty good on my channel. I mean, I know my channel is very small, but I do thank everyone who's subscribing and sticking with me uh, so far. It really helps out if you guys do like and sub. I'm trying to make it out. You know, I do this so I can learn as well as teach you guys. But yeah, so this video we're going to be using Ghidra. Ghidra is another disassembler like Ida. Um, it does have its own features. One of the main selling points of Ghidra is that it's free. And I'm not going to bore you guys with any history about Ghidra or anything like that. Just know it's another disassembler similar to Ida, but it's free. Um, Ida does have a free version, but um, it's limited. And Ghidra is limited too, since it is open source and it's free. But there's no like payment needed to use the program. I guess that's what I mean. Um, so last video, I did x64, then I used Ida. And uh, what else did I use? I don't think I used anything else. Those are the only things I used, right? Pretty sure. So yeah, Ghidra. Um, what is Ghidra? Again, it's another assembler. Um, you can get it for free if you go to their website and download from GitHub right here. And just download the one you need for your operating system. You can get a Linux and all that good stuff. All right, so let's get started here. So I've already downloaded the program. I'm gonna put this in the comments or something. Um, so you can download it yourself, but let's launch it up. Okay, so um, this program here is asking me for a username. So I'm gonna put in like anything. I'm gonna put hello, or actually let's put like, I don't know, Bob. Yeah, so then it's gonna ask for a password. And uh, so I don't know, I'll put in like password. One, two, three. Just to see if that works. And press enter. Nope, that didn't work, obviously. We don't know what the password is. All right, so now let's go ahead and take this file into Ghidra. So I'm gonna be using a VM because for some reason my Ghidra on here is kind of broken. Doesn't seem to work that good. Uh, but anyways, here we go. Here's how you're gonna to wanna to open up a new project in Ghidra and then go to the file, press on new project, non-shared, um, select your uh, project directory. I'm just gonna select, I think I used um, oh yeah, I use this one. Select that and call it, just give it a name. I'm just gonna call it RE04. Um, I'll just call it RE042. All right, it doesn't matter, just give it a name. And what you wanna do is grab the program and drag it in. Just like that. And we're gonna press on okay. Yeah, and just give it a moment for it to import and it'll shoot out this uh results summary page which will give you some information about the file that you imported um this is pretty good to look through but i don't really care about this right now so i'm gonna press on okay so i'm press on okay there and what you want to do from here is you'll see this right here double click right here and it should launch up a Ghidra. It'll ask you to analyze the files, press on yes. And these are some options you can analyze. Um, I'm not gonna choose any other ones or anything like that. I'm just gonna press analyze. And this should take a minute or two or not. It depends on how fast your PC is. Since I'm using a VM, it's gonna take me a good amount of time here. So I'll give it a second, then be right back. Okay, seems to be done now. And there's this message. I'll just press okay. First thing I want to do is to actually go down to my symbol tree here, uh, right over here, and I want to look in functions, and I want to look for the main function. So, for this program in particular, it's under the M, and it's in main right here. And it turns out we're actually already there. Ghidra automatically put us there. And the last thing here that you will notice in Ghidra is that we're getting a code, a decompiled code output. And remember, I we didn't have that. 
so Gita, we do get this, which is pretty nice. Um, because it helps, you know, if you don't really understand assembly that much, it's pretty nice to have some sort of code. Um, like this, for example, this program, I believe is C++. So, so here's the code. So you will notice right away though, that the code is very weird looking. Um, a lot of the variable names aren't exactly named uh, anything special. They have like local 28 or a little 28, little 38, you know, very arbitrary names. Uh, it makes it hard to follow along. But if you stick with it, it'll start to make sense. So let's go ahead and start looking through here. So there's our main function called here. And let's just look into here. Let's see what we have. So we have a string called local 38 here. We have user, okay, and password. So remember, the program was asking us for a username, it was asking us for a password, so that's probably, we can assume that this is most likely what that's doing. Um, and then it's gonna st store that user input into a uh, local38, which is a string. So local38 right here, or where is it, uh, right here, I will click on it and I'm going to press L so I can rename this because we now know this is username input. So I'm going to call this username underscore input uh, because I know that this is where the, the user enters in a username. Press on OK. And similarly, we will see the password down here. And again, that is being stored into a variable called local 28, which we can see is an integer which just means the password is an integer. So we'll call this here uh, user underscore password underscore input. Just like that. Uh, let's just call it pass because I don't want to take up too much. Anyways, I'm pressing on OK. User pass input. OK, so far so good. Let's continue on with the rest of the program. We have two other variables, local 1c, local 20. And we have a loop over here, a while loop. So this is where the meat of the program should occur. Um, so let's look at this while loop and see what's going on. So we have a uvar 20, we have a uvar, uvar 4, uvar 2. uvar 2 looks like it's username length. Yeah, so this would be the user name length. So let's press L again and we'll call it user name underscore length. Just like that. And yeah, so this is username length. And you can see that I actually changed it down here. And we have uvar3. Well, use if username length is less than or equal to uvar3, then break. So uvar3 is also up here. I'm gonna assume that uvar3 is like the max. We'll call it max underscore value or just max. We'll just call it, um, let's just call it max for now. If that is less than or equal to max, then break. Then we have a PC var one, which is equal to a long thing here. Let's actually look at this for a second. So we're taking your username input and it looks like we're taking our user input and local 20. So let's say we're taking our username input and we're going to take um, a specific character from that username input and we're going to be converting that to decimal. That's what this is doing. So this is called, this is, I'm going to call this raw decimal. This is converting um, a specific letter in our username and converting that to a decimal. Uh, and then that's actually going to be stored on local 21 over here. So I press L, I'm going to call this one, uh, that one, we call that one raw decimal, I'll call this one final, let's put that some more, I don't know. These are just random names, you can name it anything, but this is just what makes sense for me. Uh, but yeah, call that final decimal. And now we go down to here, local 1c is equal to local 1c plus final decimal times 4. So what this is 
doing is this logo one C, which is zero, and there's also local twenty. So local twenty is an iterator, uh, because this iterates. So I'm actually gonna rename this to an iterator. Iterate, iterator. This iterates through the username, each character on the username, and yeah, that goes back through in here. So now we have local one C, which starts off at zero. And we're basically taking our um, decimal and multiplying it by four. And then we're gonna add it to local one C and then store that uh, final value back into local one C. So that's our loop. Basically, that's what it's doing here. And it's doing that for the entire length of our username. Um, and then it checks down here if our user password input equals to what local one C is, give us a good job. Otherwise, give us the bad job message. Okay, so it sounds pretty straightforward to me here. So let's go ahead and uh, simulate this with a calculator. So let me launch up calculator here. Um, and also let's launch the program. Okay, so my username input, I'm gonna do AAA because I know A, A is hexadecimal, or I'm sorry, A's decimal is a 65. Um, we actually can, we can confirm that right now. So let me go do that. Okay, so here we go. A is ASCII, which is that, to decimal 65. B 67, C 60, I'm sorry, B66, C67, D68, and so on. So let's go back to our program. Uh, oh yeah, so here we go. Full screen this. I've set my input to be AAA. I'm gonna press enter. Now let's go with the password. Let's go to our calculator. Um, let's actually put this back down. Let me launch this. So like I said, um, we know that we've entered A. That's going to convert it to a decimal, store into final decimal, which is 65. And we're going to go to look 1C, which is 0. So 0. Look 1C is just 0. That's now going to be look 1C 0 plus final decimal 65 times 4. So 65 times 4, which is 260. And 260 is going to get stored into look 1C. Next, we're going to go ahead and increment our iterator. Our iterator is now going to be 1. That's going to be our 0. It's going to be 0 and then 1. So the next element in our in, in our input, which is the second A. And that's going to go into here. So we're going to look in here. We're going to say local 1C, which is 260. That's going to be plus 65 times 4. So 65 times 4 again is 260. So we can add another 260 here. We're going to go ahead and increment again. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, local 1C is 520. 65 times 4 is 260. And that's going to add another 260. And we get 780. Because uh, we only enter 3 A's. So that means 780 is the full end. Uh, I'm going to launch the program up now. Okay, so now I'm back in my program. And I'm going to type in 780. Press on enter, and there we go. We get the good job message. And look, we're done here. We found the one possible input, um, which is AAA, and this program is completely cracked. Now we figured out how we got our password, but I want to try another input. Let's try ABC to see how that would work, um, which is three different characters instead of just one. So let's try that out. All right, so I'm gonna clear my calculator. Launch the program, type in A, B, C, press enter. And obviously we know that um, A is 65, B is 66, and C is 67. Um, so the first thing we're going to be doing is just to follow along in the code, but we don't really have to do this. <coughs> so 65 times 4, which is 
260. Then we're going to do a 66 times 4, which is 264. Then we're going to add that to 260, which is giving us 524. And then we're going to do a 67 times 4 plus 524. Plus 524. That gives us 792. So let's try that out. 792. Hit press on enter. Yep, there we go. Good job. So it looks like we've completely cracked the program. We figured out how to do it with multiple characters and different characters. And um, now the next step to do here is to create a key gen. And the easiest way to do this would be to use Python. Let's see if I can whip one up real quick uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just quickly whipped up a key gen here. Um, it, I basically just took the same loop that was going on over here. Um, the same exact loop here and re uh, uh, redid that inside of Python. Uh, I used ORD, um, which is if you don't know what ORD is, it's a function in Python that allows you to convert um, your characters to decimal. So I basically just redid that. I just took that, I looped through the entire username input. I grabbed the character, converted it to a uh, decimal, and then multiply that by four and store that back into local 1c, which remember local 1c is our original, um, I guess this here is our password, so I'm gonna call it pass w. Um, I guess we can't say pass obviously, so we'll call it pass w. But yeah, that would be your password. And I just created a simple thing where it allows you to enter your username and it will just spit out a result pretty simple um, let's just run this real quick so enter a username um, remember we did AAA the first time we did that and I gave a 780 and 780 works um, let's try that right there uh, just launch a program and then AAA 780 so we don't have to manually do this there you go uh, we did ABC next. Let's try that. I'm going to run it up. We did ABC. That gives 792. And obviously 792. I'm not going to run it again because we know that worked. But let's say we wanted a different um, username. Let's say we wanted um, something like race cars or something like that. Press enter. You see that's a big number and it would take us a good while to calculate that number. So we have 3344. Go ahead and copy. Launch program up. Race cars. Three, three, four, four. Good job. And if we had an even longer one, let's say I like to drive cars a lot. Something like that. That's a huge username. And that number would be, you know, pretty long. So go ahead and run it up. I like to drive cars a lot, and I actually do so. <laughs> that's a tr that's not a lie. Okay, so there you go. Good job. And that's pretty much all it is, guys. And I don't know how long that took me, but we did it. We figured it out. And um, yeah, it's pretty much a lot. I hope you guys liked the video. If you happen to enjoy, please do go ahead, drop a like, subscribe. I'm really trying to, you know, make it out with this YouTube thing. I don't know. We'll see how, how it goes, but yeah. Really enjoy doing it so far. And I'm enjoying crying, or drawing some of these programs. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. So I'll see you all in the next one.